So far, we have explored many tools in Arc Pro and created some stunning data products, but we have yet to do any real geologic mapping. But what exactly is a geologic map? Geologic maps are graphically pleasing charts that display a bulk accumulation of geologic observations that ultimately describe the formative history of an area. Geologic mapping involves putting points, lines, and polygons onto a base map. More specifically, orientation points, geologic contacts, linear features, and map unit polygons. One thing I emphasize repeatedly in these videos is that when working on any project in Arc Pro, proper setup and organization is paramount. I too am eager to start mapping, but we have a few more steps before we are fully operational. To put any points, lines, or polygons onto our map, we must first build the necessary infrastructure. In Arc Pro, this means building a mapping feature data set with mapping feature classes. In this video, I will show you how to create a mapping feature data set that will house the map border, geologic contacts, geologic units, and linear features feature classes. As a review, recall that our catalog pane acts as the central command center for your project. It is here that we can find everything. Under the maps folder, we see our initial map that was created at the beginning of this project. Also, underneath the original map is the local scene that we just created in the previous video. If you accidentally close out either your map or your local scene in your workspace, you can always reopen it by clicking them here. Below the Maps folder is the Toolboxes folder. ArcGIS Pro runs on Python, which is a widely used free, cross-platform, open-source programming language. All the tools that we used in the previous videos are executed via Python scripts. People from all professions who use ArcGIS Pro sometimes write and share their toolbox scripts for performing different functions. For example, you can download an advanced hydrology toolbox if you are working specifically as a hydrogeologist. You can import additional toolboxes here if you are looking to perform different tasks or calculations. Recall from earlier videos that your project geodatabase is like your backpack that will keep all of your important books, documents, and electronics safe while you are traveling. In ArcGIS terms, the personal belongings in your backpack equate to feature datasets and feature classes, as well as your raster files. Note how we already have 12 feature classes in our geo database. Some are rasters and some are lines. Each of these feature classes stand alone and are safely stored within the geo database. When geologic mapping, it is typical to group mapping features into the following feature classes. Geologic contacts, which are lines, geologic units, which are polygons, location features, which are points, and linear features, which are also lines. Additionally, we will add a separate line feature class for map border, which will come in handy for generating our geologic unit polygons later on. Another common polygon feature class used in geologic and planetary mapping are surface textures. These overlay the geologic unit polygons, and they show surficial features. For example, a tephra blanket from a volcanic eruption, or ejecta from an impact crater. All these feature classes pertain to geologic mapping. We can group them all into a mapping feature data set within our geo database. A feature data set is a collection of related feature classes that all use the same coordinate system. It is critical that we group all mapping feature classes into a feature data set as this will allow us to use topology functions in Arc Pro that are crucial for map creation. We will discuss more about topology functions in future videos. To create a new mapping feature data set, right click the SP Tutorial Geo database, click New, and then Feature Data Set. This will open the geoprocessing pane. Here we will name the feature data set Mapping. It also asks which coordinate system we would like these features to be drawn in. Click the globe icon. Remember we first set up our map view and projected our DEM into the NAD83 UTM Zone 12N projected coordinate system. 
we want all of our data to remain consistent in the same PCS to maintain accuracy and to avoid common problems when using various ARC Pro tools. After selecting the correct PCS, click Run. The mapping feature dataset now appears in our Geo database. Next, we must add the individual mapping feature classes. Let's start with the map border. Make sure you right click the mapping feature dataset, then click New, click Feature Class. Keep in mind that feature class names in ArcPro cannot contain spaces, numbers, symbols, superscripts, or subscripts. Feature class names can only include letters and underscores. The alias, on the other hand, can contain any type of character without restriction. See how I write map border with no space for the feature class name and map border with a space for the alias. The map border will be a line feature class. Select line in the drop down menu. You can uncheck the boxes for M and Z values as our mapping feature classes will all be two dimensional. Check the box that will add the feature class to the current map for expediency. Now go down to the bottom and click next. For map border, we will not create any additional fields. Click Next again. By default, the feature class should already have the correct NAD83, UTM Zone 12, and projected coordinate system, but it's good to double check. We won't change anything with the tolerance, resolution, and storage configuration, so now click Finish. We see the map border feature class is added to our contents pane, and now if we click the drop-down menu of the mapping feature dataset in the catalog pane, we see the feature class is now stored within the geo database under the feature data set. Next, let's create the geologic units feature class. Again, right-click on the mapping feature data set and click new feature class. I set the feature class name to geo contacts, honoring the no space syntax. The alias I'm free to write geologic contacts in full form. GeoContacts will be a line feature class. Next, we go to Fields. Every feature class in Arc Pro will have an attribute table associated with it. You can think of this attribute table as a spreadsheet that contains all relevant data specific to that feature class. Adding a new field is the same as creating a new column in a spreadsheet for a specific data attribute. For geologic contacts, we will add an additional field called type. Leave it as a text data type. All geologic contacts will be lines, but as we know, there are many different types of contact lines that have different symbology and meaning. There are solid black lines for accurate contacts, dashed black lines for approximate contacts, and dotted black lines for concealed contacts to name the most common. By adding this type field to our feature class attribute table, we will be able to vary our line symbology on the map. And this will be outlined in the next video. Again, double check that the feature class is in the correct projected coordinate system and leave the tolerance, resolution, and storage configuration as they are. We see the geologic feature class is added to our contents pane, but it didn't immediately populate in the geo database. Remember, if something is not showing up in your geo database and or folder connections, when you think it should, you may have to right click and refresh. Let's now create the geologic units feature class. Again, right click on the mapping feature dataset and click new feature class. I set the feature class name to GeoUnits, honoring the no space syntax. GeoUnits will be a polygon feature class. These polygons will be responsible for bringing color to our final map product. Like before, uncheck the boxes for M and Z values and leave the add output to current map box check. Next, in the fields page, we want to add a new field called unit. Leave it as a text data type. By adding this field, we'll be able to create different colored polygons for the different rock units on our map. And this will be shown in an upcoming video. Like before, double check that it's in the correct PCS and click through the other pages. Finally, let's create the linear features feature class. Again, right click on the mapping feature dataset and click new feature class. I set the feature class name and alias to linear features 
honoring the no space syntax for the feature class name. Linear features will be a line feature class. Linear features such as faults, fold axes, ridges, and channels often cross-cut or transcend multiple geologic units. Therefore, we keep them as a separate line feature class from geologic contacts to avoid topology issues. Next, in the fields page, we want to add a new field called type. Leave it as a text data type. Since there are many different types of linear features in geology, we need to add this type attribute field to accommodate and distinguish between the many different map symbols. Congratulations, we are one step closer to mapping. We created a mapping feature data set with four new mapping feature classes that are visible in our contents and catalog pane. One last order of business is to make a new mapping group layer in our contents pane to keep these new feature classes together. Within the mapping group layer drawing order, you will want map border on top, followed by linear features, geologic contacts, and geologic units on the bottom. Remember how we added new fields to some of the feature classes? Right click geologic contacts and then click on attribute table. Here we see our empty table or spreadsheet with the default object ID, shape, and shape length fields along with our newly created type field. Once we begin to draw geologic contact lines on our map, their data will be stored here in the attribute table. We will use and learn more about the attribute table in later videos once we begin mapping. In the next video, we will import a style file containing all FGDC standardized geologic mapping symbols.